Jesus. Amen. 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 He's the one we're here for tonight. Not only to worship Him, but to praise Him, but to rejoice in Him. Amen. 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 We've got to have some rejoice. Real good to have you just this year. We want to welcome and say it's good to see you in the chapel. Amen. I'll say one of our sister churches. Amen. Amen. They may think we're a you know, big brother over here, but we're here. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're just good to be here. Good to see you folks here and our other visitors. Some here from like maybe the Marlboro area and around. But we are thankful for everybody that's here with us tonight. And we want you to just join in and worship the Lord. And we're just here to have a, I'd say, a good time in Him. Amen. 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 I'll tell you what, the world's trying to drag us down, but we're not going to let it happen. We're going to be up and we're going to be about doing the will of God. So, uh, try to say over to Gerald, we'll be having some music and uh, It'll be a little different tonight than normal, so I'm not even going to say nothing. Amen. <laughs> so, from here, you want to come up and hear me. Amen. 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 It's a good crowd tonight. It's good to see each of you here. If you stand with me, we're going to turn to page 269. And you don't probably need to know this. You've been turning on a couple of times. This, is, this old standard. And while we're singing this song, if you would. Shake hands with somebody, move around, welcome each other into the house of the Lord tonight. Tell somebody you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord.
I tell you what, when there's a lot of folks in the house, it sounds a little bit like heaven up in there when you sing it. Amen. Let's turn to page 237. Page 237. Thank <laughs> you. 
had an Easter sunrise service out at Bellstar Park, and a handful of them were there, and this uh, a song that, that we were learning, and I honestly don't, if I mess up, they're just going to keep singing, but when I heard it, I heard some kids do it, and I thought, man, we've got to do that. It's called Christ is Risen, He is Risen Indeed.
doing a little while. It's called I'm Blessed. And I don't know about you, but even on our worst days, we are blessed. Yeah. Amen. Right. Right.
Why don't we stand and read from the scriptures in Galatians chapter two? If it's not in, if it's not too difficult, Galatians chapter two. There's a scripture that says in verse number sixteen, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, uh, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus. Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. I want to ask a young uh, a preacher that uh, his name is Bill Hobai Jr. And I don't even see where he is, Bill. There he is. Would you pray and ask, uh, would you, uh, ask God to bless us to read this word? Brother Bill has just been ordained recently. And I thank God for this young man and Pray for him as a as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Father, for the night, for the night to come into your house. Father, for the reading of the word, Father, yes, for the ministry of the same triple secret. Father, I just pray that you minister unto all of us. Father, yes, give God. Father, if there would be anyone here, Father, you know, that's the Father, we pray that there's nothing they can say. Please, Lord. Father, if someone had they been crossed on the Father, pray that they can pick up their cross. Father, if you come tonight, rejoice in your name, Father. I pray that you be the sermon that's being shared. Even Brother Gary, Father, she shared your word. Father, give him the help that is needed, Father, to make it easy to do it. Father, we receive the service in your hand, Father, we ask all these things in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 The book of Galatians, chapter number two, the scripture's talking. I wanted to read that verse, the scripture right, right there, verse number 16, to put it in context of what I'm going to be preaching out of Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. And uh, many of you uh, who've studied the Word of God for any length of time, uh, you know the scripture. It's, you know, I believe that everybody should have what I call a life verse, a life verse. And this was what has been one of mine for many years, and uh, it's something that helped me. It's helped me in my walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And to understand, uh, it's not based upon me uh, performing. It's based upon what Christ did for me. And uh, it, it's a uh, it's a great thing to be saved by the grace of God. Yes. That's what I'm going to be talking about. And it says in verse 20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, uh, which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, but for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. The uh, scripture is telling us here that, uh, about the fact that a man is not saved by the works of the law. And um, the law, don't, don't say that the law was bad because Jesus didn't come to destroy the, the law. He came to fulfill the law. All the law could do is condemn us. And all the law can do is tell us what we've done wrong. But uh, Jesus Christ in his grace that God gives us something we don't deserve. And, and uh, he not only uh, speaks to us to, to help us to understand that we've sinned against the holy God. But he indeed can forgive us and cleanse us and wash us from all the things of our past. And I'm so thankful for that. For indeed the devil is notorious for trying to bring people's past to the point uh, to make them be riddled with guilt and shame and fear. But I'm glad that God is a God who uh, washes us clean, uh, clean and he indeed has forgiven us as far as the east is from the west. I'm glad he didn't say from the north to the south because there's an imaginary pole that connects the two. But from the east to the west, they'll never meet. They'll never meet. And uh, so the scripture tells us that uh, to talk about the works of the law in John chapter 6, and you don't have to turn there, but listen to it. Verse 28 and 29. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And in verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. This is the only work that indeed that God receives from people as us. That if we're not saved by our works. But we're saved to work, and, and we're saved to do something. We're not like we're not like Moshe Shlomo who's sitting soaking sour. We're not like that. Uh, we're supposed to be doing something. Some of you don't know what Moshe or Shlomo is. That just means sour as stinks. I sour as sour. Shlomo is sour. Anyway, back to the message. Uh, the scripture tells us here, though, that 
Now, that God, that Christ, you know, when they asked that question, what should we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus said to them, I love the fact when Jesus answers people and he speaks right up and tells, addresses the issues that, that are in. And he told them, this is the work of God, that you believe on him who he has sent. In other words, he says, believe on me. Uh-huh. And uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse number 3, it says what, what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ condemned it. Uh, that which has been condemning to us. Uh, I love the fact that Christ uh, c- condemned sin. The scripture in John 3.17 talks about uh, you know, 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. And so uh, Jesus Christ, he condemned uh, sin. Now, I love that. I love the fact that he did that. And he did that for me, and he did that for you. And the scripture says, I'm crucified with Christ. We just got through the time of the Passover celebration and the Easter celebration where we talked about the, the, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, the, there's a song that I used to, I still love to hear it. I don't hear it that often, but at Easter, I used to hear it every year, it seemed like. But the question, the, the song always asked the question, were you there when I when they crucified yeah, my yeah. Lord? And the answer is yes, I was there. And uh, I, the Bible says he took my sins, he took Gary Hawkins' sin, and he nailed, he nailed it to his cross, and he nailed your sins to his cross. And uh, you were born to him. You, he knew you, and he knew that you needed a Savior, every one of you. You know, and so the Bible tells us that, and uh, so that we're crucified with Christ. And, and Scripture in Colossians says this, that Christ uh, made me alive. Christ didn't come to make bad people good. Christ came to make dead people alive. And Colossians tells us that. Tells us in Colossians 2, 13 and 14, it talks about the fact how that Christ came to redeem us and to save us from our from all the sins that we have committed. And, and Christ, when he died uh, uh, on the cross, and, and the fact that you were there, that you were crucified with Christ, it means that he stood for you. He was the substitutionary death for you. In other words, he did nothing to sin against God, his Father, but you have sinned. Uh, Job asked that question, how can a man who sins uh, become righteous before a holy God. And uh, and, uh, and Job said, oh, I wish that there was a mediator between God and man, a sinful man and a holy God. I wish that God, and what he would say, I wish there was some a mediator who could take the hand of God and take the hand of a sinful man and put them together and a man become righteous. What he was longing for was the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, right. That's what he did for me. That's what he's done for you. He, you who were who knew no God, who were alienated from God, who indeed had no no hope. You were uh, just totally away from God. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, by the way, some people, we always say this, we always say, I accepted Jesus Christ. No, you didn't. He accepted you. That's and, right. You know, uh, when people will say that I accepted Christ, and if it's just up to people accepting him in the sense that everybody would accept him when it's at the point of death, when they would have to go to hell if they didn't, but acceptance of Christ, Christ is the one accepting you. He's the one who indeed made it possible. You, you, we, we have to indeed, we have to submit, we have to acknowledge, but the truth of the matter is that he indeed was the one who made you acceptable. Yes, right. Glory to God. That's a glory. That's a wonderful thought to me, because there was no way I would I would have accepted him. I would have, uh, you know, people the thing that hindered me from accepting Jesus Christ was the fact that I thought my perception of what a Christian was in the Christianity that I perceived was not good, and uh, I thought uh, that a Christian only good people were Christians in the sense that. People who didn't uh, do anything wrong. And man, I knew I knew all, did all kinds of things wrong. 
and the people would say, do you know that you die, you're, you know, you're going to die and go to hell if you don't accept Jesus? And I, I thought, well, yeah, yeah I, I know I am, but I know too that I've got a lot of friends that have died and gone to that horrible place called hell. But I wanted to say, who cares if we die? Who cares if I die? And I, I didn't know I could ever become acceptable to God. And it, uh, it wasn't until a, a, a lady uh, came to our home at Wilmerton, Oklahoma. I didn't get saved when she came to our home, but we were right in the midst of a big bad party. And it arrived, she came right in the middle of us, and she shared the love of Jesus Christ with us. And she substituted for God so loved Gary Hawkins that he gave his only begotten son that if Gary you know, we, you know, we confess and all these things. She uh, put us in a place of the fact that God's love. People wouldn't tell me about the love of God because I knew they probably thought, man, nobody could love Gary Hawkins. And, but yet God loved me. Right. And when I got a grip on the fact that God loved me, not based upon what I could become, not based upon what I had could do, but simply because of what He did and because of His grace, Giving to me something I don't get deserve, and His mercy is withholding from me what I did deserve, and had His love expanded to me and extended to me. How could I say no? And when I once I realized how good God is to love somebody like me, and so again, He didn't come to make bad people good. That's what I thought He did, but He came to make dead people alive. And uh, you know. Uh, I had a, um, a friend that, uh, he has a good friend that I don't know, but he's, he's nearing death door. And uh, he, uh, he was a man who sang a lot of music, lots of tough songs. And, and my dear brother says that, you know, he was saying, agreeing that with him, that God was going to heal him. And um, get this, understand this. All healings that come from God, but all healings are at best temporal, except for the healing of the spirit and the soul. That one day we'll have an ultimate healing. But this this man, this young man, told my dear brother, he said, I don't want people coming up here praying if it's God's will. He said, I, I know it's God's will that I be healed. He said, I know that. And uh, this gentleman, this friend of mine says, how do you address that? And I can say this. I said to him, I said, you know, um, it may not be God's will for him to be healed. He is at death's door. But I told him, I said, you know what? There was one day when Jesus, the Son of God, asked the Father, Father, if it's your will, would you let this cup pass from me? And the Bible says that Jesus, that God didn't let that cup pass. It was the will of God that Jesus died. And the, the reason he died was so that your friend, I told my friend, so that your friend can live. I said, I don't know how you're going to relay that to him. But indeed, when a man dies, a woman dies, a person dies, you know what? They're, they're in a place of eternal, uh, not just rest. I think what's going to be a, you talk about some singing. You talk about some praising. You talk about seeing things that you had never seen before. Yeah. Eye has not seen. Ear has not That's heard. Right. Had nothing. It hasn't entered into the heart of man. What God has prepared That's for us. Right. I, I don't know what it's going to be like. But man, it's going to be good. It's going to not be good. It's going to be real good. One time, uh, Bill Rumsey one time told me, he says, Brother, and we've been working on the church at Little Coetta, and, and we did a lot of time working on the church at Little Coetta. And uh, he told me one time, he said, Brother Gary, he said, you know, I think uh, I've got more friends up there than I do down here. Oh, yeah. And I said, Brother Bill, I said, you've got all kinds of friends. You've got all kinds of people that love you and know you. Well, he said, uh, you'll understand. You'll understand. And you know, when you start losing them, uh, your mom, your dad, your uncles, your brothers, your sisters, your aunts and uncles, and 
and your people you walked alongside of in the ministry and, and you, you've sung the songs of Zion together and you've been on mission trips together and you've been doing all the things that you've enjoyed together. When you start seeing them going and leaving and leaving and leaving, pretty soon, pretty soon your, your heart is kind of homesick yes. or heavy. Yes. And you know what? It's that, uh, you, you know, death is, <laughs> death is a part of living. And every minute we live, we get closer to death. And he said, well, that's a morbid thought. Well, that's reality. And it's an alarming statistic that one out of one people will die. And so I said, if you've not been aware of that, you know, I thought I'd just lay one on you there. But, um, but uh, Christ was, I was crucified, crucified with Christ. He died as a, sub, as a substitute for my sins. And because the wages of sin is death, and I had that sin in my life, and, 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 and all you'd have to commit would be one half of sin, but you'd have to go to a place called hell without Jesus Christ. And um, the thing about it is, there is no such thing as a half of sin. And uh, it's like somebody telling me, oh, I got a half, half a line or something, it's a hope, it's a whole line, don't get yourself wrong. But the Bible says, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Yeah. <laughs> That's good because knowing that Christ is in, He lives within me, and uh, and uh, you know I've been bought by the price, the price, of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, He come and he, he inhabits my being. And you say, well, you know, are you restricted to God, uh, Christ? No, not whatsoever. Christ is, he can be at all places at all times and knowing everything that ever was to be known. He, that's who he is. And, uh, and he, just because he inhabits my being, he inhabits everybody's being who needs a child of God. And, if, and he get, you have as much of God as you want. Yeah, that's good. If, if, if God seems distant to you, if you need to get, ask God to get, things, get some things out of your life that should be in there. You have as much of God as you want. You draw close to God, and the Bible says, you know what he'll do? He'll draw close That's to right. you. Right. You draw close to him, he'll, you buddy up with God, he'll buddy up with you. I'm so glad of that. And because, you know, uh, it's somebody one time said, I want to know how uh, I can get more of the Holy Spirit. And uh, the question is not how can you get more of the Holy Spirit. The question is, how can the Holy Spirit get more of you? Yeah, you, know, you? You're the one. You know, you're the one. Uh, you can do three things with the Holy Spirit. You can quench Him uh, by not doing what He wants you to do. You can grieve Him by doing things you ought not be doing. Or you can be living, led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's the way we want to be. We want to live our life led of the Holy Spirit because He's within us and He's helping us. He's a, he's a paraclete, the Scripture says. He, taught, he walks <coughs> alongside of us. He, the Spirit of within inside of us. He leads us. He indeed, He comforts us. He convinces us to do what is right. He convicts us when we fall down. And the Bible says, though a righteous man fall seven yeah. times, God will lift him up. And, uh, and uh, if a person fails in his life, the Bible says that God is a lifter up of his head. When a man gets to thinking that he's worthless and he's good for nothing, I tell you this, none of us are good for nothing. And we all have indeed become, we all were indeed away from God. We all were enemies to the cross. That's we right. were enemies to God, but Jesus Christ loved you in spite of you. And he saved you. So, living by the faith of the Son of God is not passive. It's a, it's a responsive. You know, the scripture talks about that, that in, in Hebrews 12, verse number 2, that Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. Did you ever think about that, uh, John or Tim, a classmate of mine? Did you ever think about the fact that God was the one who authored your, your eternal line wow. on the earth? And he's the finisher of your line because he indeed, he's got a path. And, and uh, it, in all your ways, we acknowledge him because the steps of a good man are ordered by God. That's right. And the stops of a good man are ordered by God. And he's the author and the finisher. It's like we're going not on a, a, a job. We're not going on the spot. 
sprint, we're going for the distance. Yes. And we, our focus is upon the end goal. Yes. And our focus yes. is upon the one who indeed initiated who we are, what we're to do, and how we're to do it. The author, the finisher of our faith. Yes. And I, I think, you know, think about guys like, uh, uh, like uh, Paul, when Paul had his... Uh, he he was about to get his head cut off, and when they cut his head off, I mean, just as soon as they cut his head off before his head hit the ground, I just believe the finisher of the face said, "That's right." Well yeah. done, Paul. Well done. He said, "Well, he lost his head." Well, no, no you know what? Well, a Christian doesn't die. A believer in Christ doesn't die. Said, oh yeah, yeah, they die. No, what makes them who they are never dies. Indeed, they, the body wears out and things like that, and things happen whether it's accident or whatever it might be. But the person for who you are will remain who you will be in the sense that you. But the difference will be you'll be without any sinful thoughts, you'll be without any lustful desires, you'll be as Christ is. And I, I love, I look for that. He's the author and the finisher of that. One of these days, he's going to say, "Gary, it's time. It's time." And uh, it's, it's, you show up. Uh, and you might be thinking, well, it's, I'm not ready. Don't no matter if you're ready or not. And uh, you have an appointed time. And uh, you won't be late for that appointment, I assure you. And uh, the scripture tells us that, that, that and, uh, uh, in Mark 13, 34, it tells us that the Son of Man is like a man taking a, a far journey. He left his house. He gave authority to everyone, all of his servants. And that's what we are. Uh, to every man his work and commanded the order to watch. If you study the word of God and you look up the word leader in the word of God, you'll find there's two times that the word leader is written about as being something that we obtain. But if you look up the word servant and you look up the and you, you do a word study on the word servant, you'll find that it's full throughout the Bible that a man is a servant, that he's to be a servant of God. He said, I don't want to be a servant. Well, you can't be great in the kingdom of God. You can't learn to serve God on the earth because we, Jesus is the greatest example of servanthood that there ever was. And he's the author and the finisher. He's the one who wrote the book. And he's the one who told the Holy Spirit what to put down there. And so he loved me, the Bible says, and he gave himself for me. I wouldn't give anything for me. I wouldn't. But he loved me. Amen. And he gave himself for me. That's right. He loved me. Man, sometimes I'm overwhelmed by that. Sometimes I'm in places where, where people don't think anybody can love them. Sometimes I'm in situations and in in places where it, it seems like the perception of people about God is not good. There's places now on the reservations and in the reserves where they don't want their Christianity. They don't want preachers. They don't want the churches, the ministry, or the mission points. They don't want those things. They say, we know what we believe. We don't, we don't want the white man's God. Uh, uh, God. <coughs> they come to our reservations or they come to our reserves. And there's so many different flavors of them. And they come and they argue and they bite and bicker among yeah. themselves. And they, they, uh, they, one lady said, she said, they, they've been on our reservation in Pine Ridge for over 100 years. And some of course 150 years he said, look at our reservation, look at what we're doing, look at what we have, what has God done for us, what has he, how has he made a difference? And it's not that God is failing, it's a failure of mankind in that he and the, he has these things that he, he puts these stipulations and he puts all these different things upon mankind. And I'm here to say that culture, not all culture is bad. In fact, there's not one culture that's complete, that's perfect. I don't give it an Italian or a German or a Spanish. There's not one culture that is perfect. And uh, to, to say that all culture is wrong, the native people of North America have been the people who have suffered the most from that. And because of that, 
many of our native people, indigenous people of North America, have no use for what is being brought to them because they see all the fallacy. <clears throat> but the Bible says He loved me. He loved our native people. You know, you know the scripture. You know, I've had to do a lot of study. <laughs> <clears throat> I know I appear to be great, but I, I'm, I'm not very sharp. So I have to do a lot of study. And when I study about uh, people groups, or if I go to certain people that I'm not familiar with, and I have to study about them and their lifestyle, their worldview, things like that, what they worship, why they worship, how the structure of the tribe or, their, or that reserve is set up, and things like that. But you know, in our life, that as a as a um, as a man of God, we have to sort out. Not everything is bad. Not everything is good. I'm not here to try to say to you that you know just embrace anything. <laughs> you let it be measured by the Word of God. If I see that wall over there's eight foot and two inches tall, that's just me making a judgment. But if I take a standard measurement that everybody agrees upon that one inch or 12 inches equal one foot and I put it up there and it says it walls eight foot and two inches, it's no longer my judgment, but it's a measurement that you all agree upon. There's one thing that measures mankind and that's this right here. It's not, it's not a person's conviction. Well, I don't like that. I don't, I didn't, I don't feel that that should be. It doesn't based upon your feelings. It's not based upon your likes and dislikes. And there's so many people that have so many different, uh, one time, well, I'm going I'm to stop that. But anyway, the scripture tells us that, that he loved me. In Romans 5, says, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure, for good men, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. Wow. Man, if I would have took the dignity of God back, I'd just be shouting, screaming, and screaming. You don't get that. You don't get that. You don't get the fact that while we were yet sinners, it's a scarcity for a righteous man, some would die. And for adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But we were right or no good, but just not need buzzard bait, sorry, stumpified, nothing. I mean, lazy and worthless. God died and allowed his son to die for us. Yeah. People like us. Yeah. And so the next question, next thing was, <clears throat> and I'm closing, it says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Have you ever been frustrated? <laughs> I talk to people on local and state and national and sometimes international levels. And sometimes uh, when they talk about native ministries or indigenous ministries, one of the words that always surfaces is frustration. They always, there's a frustration. And sometimes as the scripture says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Remember I said the grace of God is God gives us something we don't deserve. And the grace of God gave you an eternal life. The grace of God forgave you your rotten performance, your rotten sins. The grace of God is giving a home for you in glory. The grace of God allowed the Son, Jesus Christ, to come and be ridiculed and shamed and to be, be beaten and to be stabbed in the, with a spear. The grace of God allowed him to hang upon a tree. The grace of God kept yeah. him from calling down 12 legions of angels that wanted to destroy this whole earth. It was like he just said, just say the word, Jesus, and we'll destroy this world. Just say the word. The grace of God kept me from doing that. The grace of God is not my will be done, thy will be done. And God the Father said, I want him to die for people like Gary Hawkins because he'll never make it. He'll never find anything. He'll die. People used to tell me, you'll be the man 
prison or you'll be dead by the time you're 21. By the grace of God, I'm standing here and nothing in particular, but by the grace of God, I'm a child of God and I love God and I'm getting closer to Him every day. And by the grace of God, I'm going to keep preaching and teaching and telling and telling people about Jesus until the time that the grace of God says, Son, it's time to come back. And by the grace of God, I'll be headed that way. The grace of God gave me a beautiful, wonderful wife. Amen. And for May the 4th, me 50 years. Praise the grace of God. If you knew me back uh, back 50 years ago, you knew. You knew. Somebody in the family, I was joking to tell people when they said they're having an anniversary, especially if they're getting up in years and anniversary, I'll tell people, I'll say, and they said it wouldn't work out. And they said, I know, I know. They all said that. And, uh, and Paula, jokingly, uh, told, we were at a family gathering. And Paula told uh, uh, her cousins, and they said it wouldn't work out. And I mean, up three or four, but all of a sudden, yeah, that, you know where so and so said, you know, I had that. And all of us said, yeah, no, nobody, nobody gave y'all a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Your dear pastor, my dear pastor, many times he helped this old boy here who struggled with all the things that he struggled with. But you know what? The grace of God saved that old boy right there. Mm -hmm. That's right. I was such an ignorant guy when I got saved. Not that I'm ready. But I'll never forget one time, Brother Ernst, I don't know if I ever told you this. I'm going to confess it. <laughs> I was uh, <clears throat> we were in a camp house eating and I became the pastor a little quick and uh, somebody said to me, uh, Aunt Dorothy <laughs> said you got some big shoes to fill down me me every me and I said I didn't know he left his shoes <laughs> How dumb was that? <laughs> I never tried to feel for learning to shoes because I couldn't. <laughs> but I think God for this man who uh, took so. Some old drunk and dope fiend who was known to be in trouble and the law and, and uh, all that. But God saved my brother Ernest and he put it on his heart to come down to Lynn, Oklahoma and to start a work. And then God used him and Sister Ben to do a work that only I could do. Yeah. And uh, I just want to thank uh, we were both at Bad Baptist Church uh, for allowing me to come. I love preaching over here. You guys are easy to preach to. Yeah. And, uh, but I love you. And uh, thank God for And for all of you who support what we do, in the work of, of reaching out. Thank you for being faithful to God.